this critical situation in China has intensified to the next level, and I'm going to bring you all of the information you need to know. The first thing I want to discuss is what's happening specifically with China's power crisis. I'll give you the updates on that. The second thing is Evergrande. This didn't go away. This wasn't swept under the rug. I'm going to show you some updates. And the third thing is the inflation station. No matter what, we are seeing that inflation is not temporary. It's not transitory. So let's go. As usual, I've got way too much information, so for a few of these, I'm going to move through quick, just giving you the updates. China's thermal coal futures over the last few trading days has risen considerably. This is going back from January of this year, and you could see it was moving up just like all other commodities, but as soon as we moved into that August time frame, it has rocketed basically straight up china coal futures versus the ppi now that what we're seeing here from 2013 essentially all the way to the present is that these mirror each other and if we can extrapolate this essentially that if this actually does happen the producer price index is set to skyrocket and what would that do to the prices of goods and everything that we've been seeing so far it would be unbelievable it would be catastrophic even think about that to suggest that this would go from an extremely hot 9.5 percent to potentially over 30 over 30 percent this would be historic so i'm going to keep covering it and i'll show you that information so make sure that you are subscribed to this channel all right if you want to do it the easy way just give a thumbs up because when you do you're more likely to see my videos in the future a barometer of the progress towards the dual control targets in the first half of 2021 you could see what's going on with china's power crisis it breaks it down into the areas that are you know worse off than others um, i'm not going to go through all of these but just for you for your own research for your own um, information it is all in here okay that's important as we move into this next one heavy rains and flooding expanded mine shutdowns in china's biggest coal producing region sending prices to a record and hindering efforts by beijing to boost energy supplies for the winter so this is one problem on top of another Floods have closed 60 of the 682 coal mines in, I can't pronounce that, a region that has produced 30% of China's supply of the fuel this year, adding to a worsening energy crisis that threatens the country's economic growth. And you can see the image of what has happened here. This is pretty serious, okay? You don't get this every day. Certainly, there are problems. There's always going to be some sort of event that occurs, but on top of everything else it's really exacerbating this big big issue so you could see geographically where this is i pulled this from bloomberg heavy rains causing flooding and loss of life in one of china's prominent coal regions okay so that's where it's centered around take a look at this coal hits another record in china as floods deepen energy crisis thermal coal futures surge for a second day on tighter supply this was updated on october 11th you might be seeing this on the 12th i would say but either way we're looking at it going up and up mine outages are complicating the effort to prevent blackouts so let's take a step back looking at what had happened you had seen across china 20 different regions across china were experiencing blackouts and that isn't good of course when the factories need to produce stuff to then have it shipped out this is all having an impact and we will see that further intensifying and creating even bigger bottlenecks even bigger problems with the supply chain and that ultimately means for you you might say who cares who cares about them this means higher prices on your goods whether we like it or not because the input ingredients may be coming from china or products altogether we got to know that what 
gets manufactured in China, pieces of these products then get shipped out to different countries and then they add one screw or throw it in a box and say, hey, made in USA, made in Canada, made in the UK. That's the way it works. All right, take a look at this. China's power crisis prompts warning from the Rust Belt despite efforts to boost coal supply and manage electricity. Uh, Liaoning has been the biggest economy and consumes the most power of the three provinces, making up China's Rust Belt industrial region. It has been suffering widespread power cuts since mid-September, and it issued its second highest level power shortage alert on Monday. So what I'm trying to show you here is that there's so many different levels to it, but at the same time, it is getting worse. And this isn't the only thing, okay? The power crisis, that's big. That's the supply chain. That's some issues. But what about the financial system? Take a look. Evergrande crisis. Developer Modern Land China seeks debt extension to repay $87 million dollars early. Beijing-based developer seeks an extension on $250 million bond to avoid any potential payment default. That extension request comes as concerns continue to swirl about the potential Evergrande default and the Chinese property sector. Guess what? It's not just Evergrande. The fallout has begun. I know that these videos upset a few people based on some of the comments, but if you are not aware of what's happening, you are going to lose out on the, you know, the information, the knowledge, which I'm trying to unleash for people, to unveil for people. China's bond market slumps again as new Evergrande deadline passes. This is as of the 11th, the article anyway. Evergrande looks set to miss third round of bond payments some offshore bondholders have not had payment okay i told you specifically i'm going to give you an update on this and here i am delivering that for you i said they didn't get payment now this is the third time the third time all right modern land asks investors to push back the bond payment cynic warns it is likely to default next week there we go that's three so far what about uh, this one here, I think I had Fantasia in here somewhere. Same situation. Their bonds started to fall off a cliff. Bondholders didn't receive interest payments. Evergrande updates. Some dollar bondholders said coupon payments not received. Other de developers seeking to delay payments offer new bonds. I think that was in here somewhere. And yeah, they're mentioning modern land. They're mentioning this one over here. They're mentioning a few of them. The point here, yeah, there is Fantasia. They're are numerous companies and we're talking about you know small ones medium ones and in the case of Evergrande large ones so it's not just one or two the problem is systemic and we can't just simply just cross our arms and say this is going to be taken care of by someone else oh don't worry the government's going to bail them out the contagion is going to be an issue and it already is this may not happen overnight this this may not be the next Lehman, but it is a problem, let's be honest. And then you have this out of China, crude steel production dropped quickly since June. That's just showing you on the chart there. However, when you know this, this happens, this does happen, it's not the first time, but it is a significant drop, as well as looking at the iron ore, see what happened with the futures and the commodities, and notice that big drop off happens to coincide with what we are seeing with the steel production in China, obviously a big consumer of that. Last one for China today, take a look. The emperor of China scrutinizes Chinese financial institutions' ties with private firms. They are cracking down on every single aspect. They actually further intensified this, and then the Chinese tech stocks actually went up. Part of that is because of Charles um, uh, Munger. Munger went in with his other company, not Berkshire Hathaway, and went into a step further and actually uh, increased his position in Alibaba. So Charlie Munger did that. I think a lot of other investors started picking up on it. That's a totally different story. They're cracking down on every single level in the country. And I think you would probably do that when you want to um, you know, take some other actions. I'm going to leave it at that. I can't get into anything else. Let's talk about this further in the Money GPS Insights. China's problems cannot be contained easily. Let's just say it. 
When we look at it globally, the super low interest rates that have been in place for so long create problems that cannot be resolved by the flick of a switch. Fundamental crises need resolution on a personal level. That means you, your family, you've got to take care of your own situation. There's not going to be any Superman coming to save the individual. We need to take care of things as best we can. Quick note right here about Michael Burry, what he had to say on his Twitter. Also, let me know what you think of Michael Burry. Put it in the comment section down below. Let's talk about him. Should we be even paying attention to him? Let me know. The Fed, by insisting inflation is transitory, freezes companies from offering much higher wages that may become permanent, thereby creating more inflation through shortages and worker shortages, union strife, and now creating an oil spill. So this was from a few days ago. And I just thought it would be interesting to put this right here before we get into the rest. We're talking about Kraft Heinz. I showed you multiple occasions where this company and a few others said we are raising our prices. And now people will have to get used to higher food prices according to the boss of Kraft Heinz. Simple matter of fact. Quote, we are raising prices where, where necessary around the world, saying inflation was across the board. If you are seeing higher prices, hit that thumbs up button. Let me know by hitting the thumbs up button. That's going to let me know that the prices are rising right there. Click it. Thank you. Gas prices skyrocket as the global energy crisis worsens. Then we have this. Yet another worry, price of ship fuel is now at the highest since 2014. Bunker surcharges on the rise for shippers of containerized cargo, everything to do with, sh with shipping, freight, everything is up. You know that. Then we have the global fertilizer prices. I talked about this specifically in the Money GPS Trifecta Method of Investing, which is on my channel in the playlist uh, that you can see. If you scroll down, you will see that. I specifically noted fertilizer, different story. This is just showing you the Corn Belt, Tampa, uh, Middle East, Black Sea, and India, all of them are up. Okay, that's all you need to know. All of them are up at the same rate at which we saw in 2008. And, and you know, if you just went back, let's say two years ago, and look back, and you see the charts for 2008 leading up 2007 into 2008 for commodities. You would have said, oh my, God, that's so ridiculous. Oh my, oh wow, wow, that's crazy. And now today, beating those highs. This is the North American Fertilizer Price Index exceeding what we saw back in 2008. As drought worsens, California farmers are being paid not to grow crops. So they let their farm sit there and dry up, basically, to save the water. He's receiving $909 this year for each acre of farmland left dry and unplanted. And the water is staying in Lake Mead. They're trying to reserve the water, knowing it's a crisis, and simply paying them out. So we have crisis on top of crisis, weather problems going on, further intensifying these issues, Evergrande, the financial contagion, moving from the housing sector, we'll see what happens if they're not paying out those bondholders. This is madness. And I just want to let you know that I am going to cover it all. I'm gonna bring it all no matter what they say. Whatever people want to hear, I'm not going to give the rosy picture. I'm going to give you the truth. This right here, up at this card, join that. It's the Money GPS Insiders, and I'm going to email you five times a week the video of the day. Get that or at themoneygps.com. And if you want to support the channel, it's pretty easy. Hit that like button. It's right down there. I do appreciate the support. If you haven't seen this video yet, you definitely want to check it out. All right? Check it right here. Click it. I'll see you there.